Welcome to grandma's basement. This is my little recording space. So if you look around you see a lot of furniture and just random things down here. It is because it's in my grandparents' house. So we make it work the best we can, you know? So I've been making drum content for about a year now, which is so crazy. And it has exploded into this huge thing. And I'm so beyond grateful just for the opportunity to be making content. In the comments, not only does it say I look like Tom DeLong half the time, which I don't see at all, or a mix of all the band members from Blink-182, all in one person. Besides that, I get a lot of comments about how I record drums, what is my setup? What do I use to record drums? And that's just gonna be too long of a video to throw on my Instagram. So I'm gonna make a full form YouTube video around my setup. So today I really wanna show you guys the microphones I use, the placement I use. I would go over mixing, but I think that should be for a later video. So if you're interested in some like mixing content, let me know, I'd love to go over some of that. There's a lot of information out there about mic placement and how to set up drums and how to record drums. So why not throw my video into the mix and we'll see how it goes. If you guys like this and want more YouTube content, let me know. I don't know. What do people on YouTube do? Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Do people still do that? I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking for now. I'm going to show you guys the drum kit and I will show you the microphones I have. Let's check it out. I don't know what that transition was, but I see a lot of YouTubers do it. So anyways, welcome to the best seat in the house. I'm so sorry if you can hear the TV upstairs. If anyone's ever lived with their grandparents, you know that they love TV. Anyways, this is my Varus drum kit. If you guys don't know, I'm endorsed by Varus. Varus sent me this incredible orange acrylic set. It looks incredible. It sounds incredible. As for kit specifics, I have a 22 by 18 inch bass drum, 12 by eight rack tom, 16 by 15 floor tom, and a 14 by six and a half steel snare. Now I'm still using stock heads on the toms. I'm still using the code heads. On the kick, of course, I had to go with the Evans EMAD 2. Always sounds fantastic. And then on the snare, I'm running a Remo Power Stroke 4. As for cymbals, I'm using a mix of a lot of cymbals. For the hats, I'm running a 14 inch dual hi-hat. On my left hand crash, I'm rocking an 18 inch dry crash from Minel. On my right crash, I'm rocking a 19 inch medium thin crash. For my ride cymbal, I've had this ride cymbal literally since I started playing drums. I've never had to replace it, but this is a 21 inch Sabian rock ride. And as for my China Crash, I'm rocking the Zildjian Oriental. This is an 18 inch China Crash. For me, I really like to mix up brands sometimes. I've been using different brands for a long time and it kind of gives me cool textures on my kit. As for hardware, DW9000 for the hi-hat. This is the dual leg one. Down on my feet besides my socks, I am always rocking the Iron Cobras. Love to get these to match DW9000 one day, just an investment I'll have to make in the future. Okay, so that is drum hardware. That is the full drum kit. So now let's talk drum microphones. I have a lot of different drum microphones I use, but one concurrent brand you'll see a lot of is Lawton Audio. They reached out to me on Instagram, saw my content, and they loved what I did, so they sent me a bunch of microphones. So thank you so much, Lawton. Uh, I've been using their stuff for a better part of a couple months. They just sound fantastic. Highly recommend checking out Lawton Audio. They have a bunch of different ones. But yeah, let's go over all the microphones I use on my kit. Starting off on the kick drum, I'm using the Audix D6. Now this is classically called the sample microphone for a reason. There's not a lot of mid frequencies in this microphone. Very exaggerated low and high end boost with not a lot of mids. When you're recording with this microphone, you don't have to do a lot of EQ afterwards. It just sounds perfect going into your DAW. For mic placement on my kick drum, I have the D6 placed right inside my kick, pointed directly at the beaters. On the snare top, I'm using the Lawton Audio LS208. Now this guy's a dynamic microphone you'll see used a lot on drums vocals even what i love about this microphone is it has a built-in low pass and high pass feature so you can already scoop out the frequencies you don't need right on the microphone itself as for snare bottom i'm using the audix i5 great isolation great rejection brings out a lot of that top end for mic placement on my snare top i have it about two fingers off the rim pointed directly into the center of the snare. Now it's really important that you get that right directly in the middle of the snare, so you're not picking up as much overtones from the outside of the snare drum. For the mic placement on the snare bottom, I have that pointed directly in the middle of the drum. This is a cool little tip I picked up from an audio engineering friend. He has the microphone following along the snare wire, so it picks up more of the wire rather than the drum. So I have that positioned right along the length of the snare wire. Moving on to toms, we are using the Lawton Audio LS3 now this is for both my rack and my 
floor tom. Just like with the 208, there's built-in high pass and low pass filters. The rejection on these microphones is insane and the amount of tone it picks up is incredible as well. You'll see these guys used on guitar amps and guitar cabs as well. As for mic placement on the toms, we also have that pointed directly in the middle of the drum so we can pick up more of the stick attack and less of the resonant frequencies. As for my overheads, I'm using the LA-120s from Lawton Audio. Now, just like again with all the Lawton Audio stuff, you have built-in high pass and low pass features. These guys also come with different capsules. So you have omnidirectional, cardioid. They bring out so much in your overheads. And the best part, they're also pretty affordable. I have these positioned in a space pair position. Both microphones are also equal distance from the center of the snare. How I position these is I take an old mic cable. I measure them out to make sure that they're equal distance from the snare. This will ensure that the microphones are in equal phase of each other. Moving on to room mics. Now, I didn't use room mics for a long time. Uh, in a lot of my earlier covers, I just bust everything to a room reverb just because I'm recording in a basement. So I'm like, what kind of sound can I get here? But I started experimenting with my Rode NT5s just as a stereo pair, just behind a panel here. And the result I was able to get was fantastic. These used to be the microphones I used on my overheads, which also sound fantastic, by the way. Check out the Rode NT5s. But I repurposed them into room microphones so I can start experimenting with room tone. As for my placement on my room mics, I have these positioned in an XY pair about six feet away from my kit. I've also put a panel in front of my drums to soften the attack of the drums when they hit the microphones. I found this works best. I'm gonna keep experimenting with my room mics, but this is what I found works really, really well so far. And hopefully if I added like a mono room mic, this will also add to the room experience. Now, as for spot mics, I'm just starting to get these set up. I don't use spot mics a lot of the time. When I need them, I'm using the 57s. Of course, there's better options out there, but for 57s, I think they work just fine. I'm using that on my my hi-hats, my ride, and my china when I do. For mic placement of my spot mics, I have these mainly positioned towards the edge of my cymbals. You don't want to get too much in the middle because otherwise you're going to get more of a washy sound. I like to get it right on the edge of the cymbals just so you have more of a focus sound to them. Now, the only thing I'm really missing now that I want to get, there's two microphones I want to get and they're also from Lawton Audio, but the Atlantis and the Clarion. I would love to experiment with a kick out mic eventually and also a mono room mic. Those are the two microphones I would love to add. Those are on my wish list. Uh, but of course we got to save money as like a content creator. Lastly, every microphone that I have here runs straight into my interfaces. Yes, I say interfaces. Basically, I use my live rig for this project as well. So I run an X32 rack for 16 of my inputs. And then I also run an additional eight on my Focusrite Scarlett 18i20. Now I usually use all of this for our live show, but it works really well in the studio too. It's also super convenient because I can also pick this up and take my studio wherever I need it to be. This is what I also use to record all of my band's live shows. This is what I do to automate our performances. It's a very, very useful rack and it's a centerpiece to how I do my work in the studio. Guys, that is it. That was a lot and I'm so sorry if this is a long video. Uh, I still have to edit all this together so I'm not sure how long it will be, but hopefully you found something informative in here. I'm not the best at explaining things, but I know there's a lot of people who are curious about my drum setup and how I record my videos on social media. And this is the full breakdown. This is everything I use every single day, whether I'm recording myself, my band, other bands, or just my TikTok videos. This is the rig I use every single day, the microphones I use, and yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. If you guys do want some more of this content, please let me know. Please leave a comment, a like, maybe subscribe if you like it. I'm always really curious to hear feedback and I want to grow this further and uh, see where it goes. Anyways, guys, until the next video, this has been Blaine.